trimming the tree in tech, but now you have already done that and then people started piling into it. So the trade is mostly done, I think. And if you know, we get some details from uh, the different custodians and prime brokers we work with, and they're saying now that a lot of hedge funds are underweight tech. And so I don't think this is the time to go start shorting something that is, you know, falling on its chin. Um, and as Karen said, a lot of these have run up now into earnings. So, you know, we see, you know, maybe a little bit more upside for financials. We're more heavily into European financials, but you have to start trimming here too, because, you know, they're not at overvalued levels yet. Um, but what happens is once you start getting paid and then potentially overpaid, then you want to be bottom fishing in the best names of what you're talking about in fintech. Not all names, but the best names. Yeah, in terms of positioning, Goldman Sachs had an interesting note out about hedge funds selling off technology in the last four days, ending on two, just this past Tuesday, so not including um, Wednesday's sell-off. But the, the dollar amount of technology sold is the highest level in about a decade. Karen, do you think that the sell-off that we've seen in, in an firm which is down about 26% over the past month. Is that sort of pain over in that trade or is, are the valuations still, still overstretched? I think the valuations are still overstretched. Now, of course, it could trade at any price. It could trade up sharply, that could happen. But I think that these stocks look like they're attractive given how far could they've come down from where they were insane. So that doesn't make them to me, uh, you know, a good valuation. I still think there's a lot of froth in there. So I, the, you know, I just look at the valuation of the much more, you know, old line legacy banks, and that valuation, even though it's moved up a little bit, is still to me very attractive. So I don't want to, you know, I am short some IGV because I do have Fang stocks, I have exposure there, but. Um, I, I am not anywhere close to getting on board for some of these fintechs. Is that how you should look at it? I mean, is it the traditional banks or is it fintech? Or is, is fintech versus other places in technology, Tim? I, I, look, I, I, JP Morgan's a fintech bank, let's be clear. I, and, and actually, it's going to be an earnings driver. Uh, their, their digital business, their cost savings, and, and their ability to actually navigate into a lot of these platforms um, that I, I think not only are more efficient, but, but in some cases are offering higher margins. I, I, they are fintech banks. I, I, you know, old is new, new is old. Um, and I think this is part of the dynamic. A firm, uh, again, it's not because there's regulatory pressure uh, on them. It's, there's an extra focus uh, by regulators on some of these loans and what they're doing with the consumer. The valuation never made any sense. It's nice. It's a new business line. I get it. Um, but it, it's, you know, the, 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 the legacy money banks are the ones to own. Yeah. Guy? You know, it's interesting. Tim Kroll's J.P. Morgan Fintech, he's spot on. And Jamie Dimon was early on this as well. He talked about sort of the existential threat. Meanwhile, he was arming himself for exactly that. So I'm with him. And it's interesting. And we've talked about this. Dan Nathan was early on this one, but I think we've all come around to it. Morgan Stanley, which was floundering, and I'm using that word by choice, for years, they finally figured it out. And they got themselves into three very distinct business verticals, and they're killing it right now. So... In terms of the legacy banks, the ones we talk about all the time, I think Morgan Stanley continues to set up really well. All right, coming up, another big bright spot in today's market, energy, the trade fueling higher today. We'll find out how the traders are playing these moves now, plus sheep in wolves' clothing, innocent value.